All right, welcome folks. My name is Nathan and we're gonna go through a Excel introduction here. And we're recording this, so if you wanna review the steps later, you can do that by watching the video. And I've also shared a URL here that has some optional notes that I'm working off of. And you can contact me with any questions. I'll put my email address here. All right, so uh, I thought we should start with the basics here and some, some context. And uh, that is that we're gonna be working in an Excel file here. And this is what it looks like when I open it up. It opens up and initially this is what your Excel files would look like. Uh, this whole file together is called a book or a workbook. And within that, what you're given to be to start with are three sheets, normally sheet one, two, and three that are all blank. So worksheets or sheets exist inside of a book or a workbook. Uh, these sheets can be renamed. And if you can do that by right clicking on a sheet and you get all sorts of options, we'll choose rename and type a new name and hit enter. So you can also add additional sheets with this plus in the bottom of the workbook. All right, and then it's important, another way that context is important here is that your mouse cursor has many different uh, shapes that it takes depending on where you're pointing it. So let's talk about that. So first of all, um, just selecting a cell, clicking on it with a white plus uh, is an option. And then I wanna put something in this. I say I wanna type the word hello. I, I type, okay, so I've typed hello, but I missed the O. I wanna add the O. So I click on that cell and I type an O and I end up erasing hell and I know I have hello. This is an important concept. This is uh, showing the difference between being on a cell and in a cell. If I wanna go back and bring back the content I had before, I can click undo. Now, if I wanna get inside that cell, I can double click on the cell. My mouse cursor changes to this symbol here and I can add in a letter and hit enter. The same option is available if I click on a cell to get inside of it, I can use this bar up here. It's called the formula bar, uh, but you can also just edit text in there as well. Okay, so uh, if you're on a cell and you hit the delete key, you're gonna delete the entire contents. You can undo again. And again, if I double click or click in the formula bar, you can delete individual characters. All right, now moving on to another tab. I have added other tabs in here and um, it's just for some sample data to work with. So first of all, we can click and drag to select content. The mouse cursor again is that white arrow. And another thing that you can do here is you could actually move content. So let's say that we want to, well first let's do something even more basic than that. Let's say we want to make a copy of this content and put it somewhere else. So I'm going to select from here to here. And of course I've got the copy option in the edit menu at the very top, but I'm a fan of shortcuts. So I'm gonna use Command C on a Windows computer, it'd be Control C. And then sometimes people wonder, do I need to choose that exact number of cells to paste that into? No, you just click the upper left most cell where you wanna paste Command or again Control on Windows and V to paste. I can undo that. And then uh, another question that comes up when people do copying and pasting and cutting and pasting is what do I do with the dashed line that's spinning around my material that I've copied? Escape is the key to use to end that selection. Okay, now I don't know if you have ever tried to select a long list of content like this. 
It can go really fast or too slow depending on how long the content is. So I wanna show you a shortcut for how to select several cells at once without having to scroll and hold the mouse down. So what you do is you click the first cell that you want to select and then you simply scroll without holding any keys down to the last cell. But before you click that last cell in the opposite corner of the selection area that you want, you hold the shift key down. So I'm holding shift, I click, and it select, selects that entire portion. Okay, next, columns here. Uh, I can't see all the text in this cell, so I'd like to do something called resizing. I'd like to make this column wider. And I can do that with yet another mouse symbol between A and B, it's a two-headed arrow. I can press and drag, or here's a shortcut. If you want to resize the column to the widest content in that column, you can double click with this two headed arrow. Same thing here between this, these two columns, I can double click and it shrinks up a little bit until it's as long as Madison and Hancock here. If I decide that I would like this to be a little narrower, I do have an option called wrapping the text. And then I could manually make this content narrower <laughs> and for some reason it's not actually resizing the height of the column so I'm going to manually do that here. Typically it will resize the height of the column for you as you wrap the text. Okay next some other shortcuts on this resize and auto fill tab. This is one of my favorite features in Excel and that is uh, auto-filling certain kinds of content. So Excel recognizes patterns. So I can use yet another mouse symbol here. Actually, do you see how all these are too narrow? <laughs> I'd like to make all of these columns wider here. So I know that I can go between everyone and I can drag or I can double click, but I'd like to do the resizing of all these at the same time. So here's an option using another mouse symbol, the black arrow at, on the top of a column. Press down and drag, and you can select many columns. And then going between any two columns, you can either drag and all columns will become that width, or you can double click and all columns will become as wide as the widest content in that column. We might use that uh, merging option here up next to wrap text for that title. And now we have the option to resize this column to the most appropriate width there. So for auto filling and Excel recognizing patterns here, you can press down with the black plus in the bottom right corner and drag. And notice that if you go past the end of a series, it will continue on. Now I need to resize again, so I double click. The pattern is also for abbreviations. And days of the week. And now I'm gonna, I think, make, give you a good surprise here. Um, instead of dragging, especially when you have a long list of filled content, you can use this black plus to double click to fill as far as the longest column next to this column. So if I double click, it fills in down to the end of column C content. And now we have a curious thing that's happened in these cells down here. These cells do have dates in them, but you can see that now we're into two digit days, the content is too wide to fit. So making it wider will allow the content to be visible here. Why does Excel do that? Excel wants to be sure that you know what the whole number is. They don't want you to think that something that's been cut off is not actually there. So now the next option here is just a word, double clicking, fills it in. Word plus a number automatically fills in that series. A number just copies it unless you use this little smart tag at the bottom, which allows you to, instead of copy the number, fill the series. And if that was not the increment you wanted, if you wanted to go up by 50 at a time, you could change the second number 
select the two cells to say, this is the pattern I want to recreate, and then double click, and it will increment by 50 instead. Excel recognizes uh, or, uh, ordinals, I think they're called, and here as well. And then this is a, just a combination, much like pro product 1000 here. I can just fill that in, and I can fill in the years here. If I manually just type in 2020, I can also fill that in without having to use the smart tag to fill the series. Now, there's a pretty cool feature in Excel where you can actually combine information. And so for the first time, we're gonna use something called a formula. We're going to actually begin a formula in this cell and we're gonna tr try to combine semester one and 2019 together into one cell. You could also use this for something like first name and last name. Anytime you wanna begin a formula, you can, one way to begin a formula is to hit the equals sign. And then there's a very fast way to combine text like this. You say, I wanna combine this cell. When I click on that cell, it puts in not SEM1, but J2. That is referring to the column that that content is in and the row. I wanna combine this content with this content. And so there's a cool symbol you can use. It's just the ampersand. And you wanna add that to this content, K2, and hit enter when you're done. And now you've combined that content. Now we're missing a space, right? So we can use this formula bar I mentioned up here at the top to edit this content. And I can hit a space in here and hit enter, but it doesn't put a space in. Why is that? Excel needs to know that I want it to start paying attention to the spaces in my formula. So I'm gonna put in a quote and then a space and a quote. And I wanna add that to what's in K2. This is all in the notes. So don't worry if this is feeling too, like too much. All right, there we go. Sem one space 2019, double click to fill and it automatically knows to move down with that new information. Double click to resize. I'll take a 30 second break before I go on to the last topic. Any questions, you can unmute your microphone or you can chat with Bonnie. There's a chat tool that should be uh, on your screen if you move your mouse. I'm not seeing any chatting. Great. Okay, so this is our last, uh, <clears throat> probably the last sheet we'll get to here because uh, just about, just about out of time. We know what to do with uh, some of the issues in this collection of information here. We know that we have to make this column wider so we can see the numbers in column A and column E. And again, I can double click to adjust that. And let's see here. We can do some things like formatting. That's a common request people have. Maybe we wanna make all of these cells bold. We can select them and use the tools at the top here. We can fill them in. And we can even change font color. Okay, next, uh, what if we were to wanna to format these over here as well? Let's say I wanna format this item and I wanna make it uh, filled with green. And I say, oh, you know what, I should do these two. And then I remember that I also have an additional department that's uh, started here. And so I wanna add that in. Well, if this is days later and I don't remember which green I used, I can copy formatting. This is one of my favorite tools in all of Excel and Word and PowerPoint. You select the cell you like the look of, you click this paintbrush, and you will copy the formatting from that cell to the other cell. And that formatting can be font, size, color, italics, bold, etc. cetera. Works great in Word and PowerPoint as well. 
Okay, the next, uh, near the, nearly the last thing here is the count if formula. So I wanna find out how many people are in each of these departments. So I can use a formula and that starts with equals. And I happen to know the name of this formula. So I'm just gonna type it in. And a parentheses is the universal symbol after the name of the formula. The COUNTIF formula needs to, a range of cells that it needs to search through, and that is all of these. I select those cells, and then it needs a criteria. But you see there's a comma right after the word range. So I put a comma in. The criteria is meaning what do you wanna look for? I wanna look for this word. And then the end symbol is a parentheses, is indicated there, and I hit enter, and it says there's five of those. And if someone moves departments to a new department, it automatically updates that. Now, uh, you can also fill this formula, but you'll find that when you do, it actually sh uh, shifts the formula so that it's not looking at these cells here anymore, it's looking at these cells here and for the manufacturing, it's looking from here down. It basically moves the reference of the cells down one every time I drag this formula down, so it becomes inaccurate. So that's our, my uh, teaser to come back for Excel part two. <laughs> Some other day. All right, I'm gonna stop recording and uh, share the URL with the notes again. I'll make the recording available in email. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Nathan, that was great.